<clears throat> Goodness gracious. <sighs> Just always running a step behind. Pardon me, I don't have my mic on yet. I haven't fixed my computer to do stuff yet. It is what it is. Anyway, oh, I need to turn the volume down on this because... There we go. All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I am the ever late for primetime Jeff. This is JR's Wood Shop. So welcome uh, if you're a first timer. Glad you're here with me. If you're a repeat, thanks for coming back. Um, yeah, so I'm a little behind in my, my, my prep work for the show this morning. So if you give me just a second to kind of get things set up here, um, I generally try to have all this stuff done as I go live, but it doesn't always work out. So, um, yeah, so I need to just like get my, basically, if you've watched me before, you know what I'm doing. I, I have to get my chat windows and stuff set up here so that if you want to join um, the conversation, no. Um, if you want to join in a conversation, I have chat windows open and uh, I, I try to keep those open in separate panes on my computer here so that uh, I can interact with them accordingly. And uh, no, don't go up there. And it just takes a minute for me to drag everything into place here and get it all good. So, uh, and the reason is because I stream on three different platforms. So if you haven't uh, checked out uh, the other plat, if you're on Twitch, say maybe, and you wanna go watch me on Facebook or, or uh, YouTube, those options are available. If you look down in the bottom down there, you'll see my socials, they're in the about page on Twitch and they're in the description of the videos down below. So I am on three different platforms at the same time. And uh, it can be a little tricky. I don't, I, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it's, it's set up so that the actual streaming part's not too bad, but the um, getting there can be a little, a little difficult to, for me to get things just kind of lined up so that the stars align and it's all good. And all right, let's see here. I've got three windows open now, I think. Open, maybe, there we go. All right, I've got my last window open, which is Twitch here. And um, I actually get more interaction chat-wise on Twitch than any other platform. So I really wanna make sure I have these open so that I can see everybody's comments. And um, where is this one? Oh, I need to move this one over. Oh, this one's not right. Hang on. We need to make this normal default view so I can see comments. There we go. All right, I think I'm all set up now. Um, I have all my windows open here. So I've got my Twitch, my Facebook, and my YouTube are all open. I can see comments and such as they come in. I can type replies or I can interact with you guys. If you've been here before, you'll know I don't monitor this like 100% of the time that I'm on because, well, I'm working with tools and sharp blades and things that can, you know, make me have less fingers and stuff. So I, I I look at this as I can. I try to keep an eye on it and I keep this open just for that purpose, but I don't watch it all the time. So if you do type a comment or have a question or whatever and you wanna put it in there, I really encourage you to do that. But just know that I may not be super fast in responding. The other thing is because this is not a unified chat window for all these platforms, um, if you're watching on one platform and I start answering a question, you'll be like, what the heck is he talking about? I will try to repeat the question and let you know where it came in from so that you're not just thinking that I'm answering questions without being asked them first. Because uh, if someone on Twitch asks me a question and you're watching on Facebook, you'd be like, what is he talking about? So I'll repeat the question if I get one. And uh, just so you're not, everybody's not lost in the conversational loop, as it were. Uh, so let's catch up to where we are right now. So just to kind of run through, if you look over here, you'll see there's a stack now of four uh, bases or four, eight bases, two stacks of four. And yesterday I finished staining the, uh, the last two, four, the last four. Um, well, one of them needed a, a second coat. That's the uh, um, 
what is it, the, uh, the oil, the tongue oil usually gets a second coat, so I have to wait a day to get the second coat. The other ones, uh, the other two got their coats, I think it was one oak box and one uh, cherry. So I finished staining all of those. That stuff has to sit out here now for about a, mm, a week, give or take, because I want it to cure. Uh, I don't want to have any, uh, any residual uh, stain or oil or anything that will interact with the lacquer when I put it on there. So I'm going to let that stuff set, let it cure, and then probably sometime next week I will start um, lacquering these things. And once they're completely lacquered, uh, then I will let them sit again for about a week. Um, I'll take some beauty shots of them. I'll post them on my webpage, and then we'll sell them. So that's kind of where those are. So this is all done. And in celebration of these, excuse me, there we go, of these being all completed, um, I wanted to go ahead and start a, uh, my next batch. I'm kind of going through the remainder of my, my wood stores right now. Uh, I've, I've pretty much depleted most of my usable stock. Um, I have some stuff left over. And so what I did was on Monday, I kind of went through what I have left and looked at the, uh, the supplies that I have, and then determined how much product I can produce from the raw materials that I have. It's the easiest way of putting it. Um, I have some beautiful uh, walnut right here. So lovely walnut. I had some, this is interesting, this is um, a quarter sawn um, sycamore. So it's got some really cool, interesting grain features to it. Kind of looks like leopard wood, but I've got some of this. Um, I've got some quarter sawn red oak instead of the standard white oak that I usually use. And I had a little bit of uh, just good old fashioned cherry. So what I'm gonna do is uh, turn these into, instead of these larger bases, I'm gonna go and make what's called a three quarter size base. That's what I call them. Anyway, and this is for another set of machines that is, well, three quarters the size of the normal machines that I make bases for. I and mean, there's quite a few of them. And I've got a lot of requests um, over time for those. And sometimes I'll try to throw one into the mix, but I thought this time I would go ahead and make, um, go ahead and make uh, quite a few of them. And then, you know, if they sit for a little while, that's okay. But it's nice to have stock uh, for selling purposes. So if I can get these done, I mean, that's eight bases right there. This is, I think I've got seven. I was kind of counting it up and these will be in the same kind of grab these. It'll, they'll be in the same general format as these. So this is what I would call a standard size base with a storage compartment. You can see there's a little compartment here. It has a little lid. This one's already spoken for, by the way, can't have this one. Um, but I also make just the standard without the storage compartment. So it's missing over here, but the machine would just sit in front. So these are the two basic formats that I make my bases in. Now, the other thing about these is that um, it, it, they're just the three quarter size machines are just smaller. So these are, they're just shrunk down just a little bit from these. Um, the other option, I'll show you this one. No, nope, I can't show you this one because it doesn't have it. So the other option I put on these is to either have it with or without this logo on the front. Um, and I do these on my CNC machine. I already have the pattern already set up and all I have to do is put the wood in there, set the bit up and off it goes. And I make these logos in here. I, sometimes I put them on, sometimes I don't. They will fit on the three quarter machine because I'm using the same width of material pretty much. Um, these are three, are three inches tall and the three quarter size bases do not need to be as tall. They could actually be like, I don't know, two inches or inch and three quarters thick um, or tall. But I generally just make them the same width just to keep things simple from my head. I had some stock that was a little thinner than that, like right here. This is not three inches. You can see that it's, you know, maybe two and a half inches. And that's fine. It'll still work perfectly well for the three quarter bases. Um, they are not as deep. The, the bottoms of the machine don't go down as far as the large bases. And so not really an issue, but just for standardized 
stuff, I try to keep it around three inches. So this would probably not get a logo on it, this thinner wood here, because it just wouldn't fit. I'd have to shrink it down, and that's just a pain. I don't want to change my pattern or anything. Um, but anyway, so those are the two options that I have, with or without storage compartment and with or without the logo. But the three-quarter bases look identical to those in terms of the way they're manufactured and everything else. It's just the dimensions are shrunk down to fit those machines. And uh, so I start, you know, taking my stock, measuring it, saying, well, okay, if I need 18 inches of width um, for my longest pieces, you know, how many of that can I fit in here? And then I'll need like for the sides, if it has a storage compartment, it's going to need three sides. If it doesn't have a storage, it needs two. So how much, how much actual material and how many of these can I squeeze out of these, these boards that I have? And I figured that out. So I've got one, two, three, I think it was four, five, six, seven bases is what I came up with, I believe. Um, I wanted to do, I could actually do eight if I wanted. So if I wanted to just make regular bases out of this without a, any storage compartment, I could do that. If I wanted to do a storage compartment, I don't have an extra piece to make a lid. And I really don't like to make my storage compartments without lids. Some people do. There's some people make these bases and sell them that way. I, that's just not for me. So anyway, um, I, I think I'm going to just sacrifice some of this wood up and just use a couple pieces. I think I measured these out to figure out how many I could get on here. So what I did yesterday, along with staining, was I just kind of got my ruler out and started measuring to see how many actual um, machines I could make out of these, uh, or how many, how many bases I could make, I'm sorry. And so I got one, two, and then this would take, so here's two sides, and then one, two, three um, end pieces if I was gonna do one with the storage. Now the problem is I need enough of this wood left over that I can make a lid. So looking at this one, I measured out and I said, well, if I do just a regular base, I could do two long pieces for the base, for the, for the long sides, and then two sides. And then I would have all this wood left over here that I could use for, the, um, for basically cutting it in half, flipping it, book matching it, and making a lid for this longer one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight bases in total. That was a long way around, wasn't it? Um, anyway, eight bases in total. The one thing I need to be sure of though is that I, before I start milling this piece down to thickness, because um, that's the next step is to get them down to about this thick, which is three quarters of an inch. That's my working thickness. Before I do that with this piece of wood, I want to chop off a section of it that I can use for the lid and the reason I want it to be thick is that I resaw this stuff and then take that resaw. Resaw is when you take a piece of wood like this and you split it so that it takes makes two pieces of wood you flip them over you put them together and that's your lid so by resawing this I need the thickness to be able to resaw it and, and have wood to work with because it needs to be about a quarter of an inch and it's a, it's a whole thing but I'm going to cut a section of this off and then I can flatten this down. I don't want to flatten down the section I'm going to use for the lid. So I'll cut this section off really quickly. Uh, maybe I'll just run over to my, uh, my chop saw over here, take that off, and then I have my pieces to go. The next thing I need to do is figure out how, which order I want to put these in, in terms of running them through the planer. So the planer I've got set up over here. You can see there's my planer ready to roll. Um, and Basically what the planer does is the cutting head, there's a flat surface and then the cutter head lowers down and every time you lower it down it shaves a little bit more wood off as it passes through. So I need to start with the thickest stuff. Want to become famous by followers, primes and viewers? Yeah, I wish I had the ability to actually just like, you know, I do, but I don't log in as myself on my Twitch and I would like to go in and just ban people. <laughs> who put these spammy messages in my Twitch feed. Anyway, I'm sorry. Um, not a real person, just a bot. Anyway, so I need to start with the thickest pieces first and get those down. And then as I get down to the next thickness of wood, which might be like this, 
Um, then I would start feeding all those pieces through. And then as I get down to a little bit further down, I might go to this piece, uh, to this thickness, and then start feeding these through. And then the last one is this. This is almost a thickness. This is basically, I think, let's see how thick this is. Yeah, so this is uh, 0.87. I need 0.75. So this is basically, you know, a tenth of an inch away from being perfect. Um, and uh, so that would be the last, as I get down to that thickness, I'll be still doing all the boards, but those will get included into the mix at the very end as that thickness gets down and, and I can uh, get them set up that way. Now, the one thing I haven't done yet is I didn't set up my feed table because you'll notice my, uh, let me go back over here. So on my, on my uh, planer, it does not have a, a feed table built in. I, I wish it did when I bought it. I just, I couldn't afford the model that did. This is, this is a Harbor Freight and it's served me well over the years. But what it doesn't have is little feed arms and, and such that basically their extension arms that would flip down on each side. So you'd have them and they'd flip down and it gives you a bed to slide in on and a bed to support sliding out of. I don't have that, but what I do have is this that I made for my planer that I will stick in here right now. So this is a sheet of melamine and on the back of it, you'll notice that there is, let me get it over here so you can see, on the back of it are two boards mounted to it. Those boards perfectly slip over the edge of the front and the back of this. So when I slide it in here, and it's the, the exact width of the planer. So when I slide this in, you'll notice it's just kind of seats. There we go, like that. Uh, the melamine on top of press wood is really super flat. So this gives me a nice flat surface and a little bit of an out feed to run these out on. Uh, the big thing is you wanna to try to avoid snipe on your boards because snipe is really hard to, it, it eats into the board. Basically it's the point at which the wood first feeds into the planer knives and it digs a little deeper. And then it kind of, when the wood comes out the other side, it equalizes, you get a nice cut. And then as the board comes to the end of the planer, it does the same thing where you get a little bit deeper cut on the front and the back, which means you lose wood essentially when you're, uh, when you're running it through, you're gonna lose some wood and that's not a good thing. So I try to eliminate that snipe as best as possible. Um, let's see here. So I'll tell you what, to start things off, I'm gonna, before I forget, because I do not wanna forget this, is that I'm going to, uh, let me plug this in. Let me get my power plug here. I'm gonna go plug in my chop saw real quick and I'm gonna chop that piece of sycamore off so that I can ensure that I have enough wood for doing the uh, the lid for the base I want to make. Like I said, I don't have to cut off a lot of wood, but it's enough that uh, if I planed it down, I would lose what I need. So uh, what I did the other day was I, I got my dimensions. I have them all on a drawing that I use and, and it's, it has all the dimensions on there. For making a full size base, um, the dimensions on here, because the full size base has a longer side panel. So that is 18 and a half inches. If I'm doing a short base with no side, that's 13 and three quarters. And I believe that's what I've got marked out on here, just rough marks on, I believe it's this board. So these should be, let me get my ruler. So 13 and three quarters. Yeah, so I've marked out for a short base on here and a couple of sides. And uh, so all I wanna do now is, oh, got my mic cord stuck there. All I wanna do now is cut off, I don't have to cut the whole thing, just a little bit off of here. That leaves me lots of room to play with when I start sizing these boards up but I need a, enough of this off of here. I don't know, like maybe eight inches or so. So about this much right there. And that will give me um, material for a lid. And then I can take the rest of this stuff and just 
knock it down to size. So I'm going to put this over here and just kind of get the edge of it here. And then, uh, you know, I should be a good boy. Of course, I had to turn my dust collector around so that it was closer to the planer. And now I need it over here because I wasn't planning to do this right now. But this thing is a dust monster. So let me get just some dust collection in here. I'm only making one cut. It's not like I'm doing a whole lot here, but every little bit of dust we can keep out of the air is helpful. So I'll turn this on. All right, so this is my lid right here. Um, I also have like for all of these um, walnut ones, I have this piece of walnut that is really, it's really pretty. Um, this is, it's kind of gnarly and crusty and everything else, but I'm gonna make lids for the walnut pieces using this. And uh, they should be pretty gorgeous. It's really thick and chunky. Um, so I've got lots of depth to play with on this thing for when I get ready to make the lids on these. But I'm gonna put this with this so that I can have them together and know that those are my lids. I can take this now, put it back over here and we can plane these down as needed. Now, like I said, the one thing I wanna do is start with my thickest pieces. So I'm gonna just measure these. I know these red oak pieces right here are the thickest ones and I'm just gonna, you know, they're 11 or 1.185. That's 1.2. So these are my thickest. The thing is I need to figure out, okay, which is the thickest of these materials. And the thing is they're not uniformly thick. I think it's thicker down at this end. So let me take a measurement down here. Um, 1.184. So this is almost as thick as that oak, which is surprising. Almost as thick as that oak. Actually, <laughs> It's thicker than the oak in places. So I will be starting with the sycamore, then the red oak. Uh, the maple or the walnut is 1.0, so it's just one inch. Um, so that will take the when I get down to an inch in the planer, I will then move to doing the walnut and including that with the rest of the wood. And then finally, when I get down to everything here at about 0.8 inches, I'll start mixing in these to get them worked out as well. Um, this is just going to be one base because I've got some scrappy pieces here and stuff. This has a split in the end of it right here. Um, so this is just basically going to be one base right here. So what did I say I had? Uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bases. So we're going to make eight more bases. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this. I'm going to get my dust collection and move it back over to the saw. Now, the one thing I'm going to do here, because I do have a couple of longer pieces, um, I want to add some support. <clears throat> Let's see if this camera over here. So I want to add some support to the back side of this so that when the boards come off, they're not going to droop down because they are kind of, some of these are kind of long. So I've got this little thing right here, which is just a little roller stand. And I got this at uh, Harbor Freight. It's pretty cheap. It's just a little cheap roller stand. You can, uh, basically you just open up the legs. It's got little legs like this. You open the legs up and then you just set the, uh, the height. It has a little handle here. Oops, sorry. Little handle here. You set the height at how high you want it to be. So let me get one of my longer boards here and I'm just going to rest this on the table. Hopefully that's, yeah, there we go. So I'm going to rest this on the table <coughs> and then adjust the height of this roller stand so that it is supporting the wood as it comes out of the planer. So we'll put this right over top of it. Put it up here. Now I should probably move it away from here a little bit. So I don't know if you can still see me or not, but I'm gonna just down. 
set it down a little bit more. Tighten this up. So what happens is this comes out, it, it hits this roller, which is right, right on the edge of your frame there. It hits this roller so that when this thing comes out and goes all the way through like this, it's not gonna fall down to the floor, it'll stay. So you can see there's the end sticking up, but it's not falling because I've got this roller stand right there. So that is the purpose of the roller stand. It's just really helpful that way. I have my dust collection um, attached. Now, hopefully, fingers crossed, when I start all this up, I got a lot of electrical stuff going on here. And I can tell you that this draws a lot of electricity when I do this kind of stuff. The dust collector is on a different circuit um, then the planer. Typically on the planer, I run this on the same circuit that the computer and the lights and everything else are on. I've run my, my extension cord all the way into the house to a different socket. Hopefully that socket is not connected to this socket because I don't want to take a chance on knocking the computer offline and having to restart the stream. Um, that would stink immensely. <laughs> so hopefully I've got it plugged into a different circuit inside the house so that um, we can get a nice stream staying on while I'm doing this planing stuff. The, the, uh, I really need to get some additional circuits in my garage because it's just really hard to do this kind of stuff. But anyway, let me go ahead and um, I'm gonna try to keep all this stuff separated over here. And I think I'm gonna move these over so I'm going to put these in, in order according to their thickness. So those will be last. So as I pull them out and start running them through, it'll take a few um, runs to get these down to the thickness of the, um, the walnut. So I'll keep measuring. So I'll get my calipers. So I've got my calipers right here. I will keep using those and I will measure as I go. Um, the first thing I need to do is set the thickness on one of my one of my thicker pieces here. So I'm going to set the initial thickness here. So I'm just going to put this in, lower this down a little bit, and until I hit the rollers, but still clearing the front here. Yeah, right there. And then uh, we'll make a pass. So I'm going to turn on everything let's do a test pass on this and see how we're looking
Okay, so just to kind of show you what happened there, because this wood is not uniform in thickness from one end to the other. Um, you know, I try to identify the thickest part and, and take my blade up to the thickest part to cut it down. These were actually, in some places, thicker and chunkier than the, uh, than the sycamore was. So you can see on this one, you see this light strip right there. That's where the blade impacted the wood itself and made a cut. Um, but the rest of it is really dark and unaffected because this did not actually touch the blade at any point in time, just right here. So this was the highest part of the wood. Um, as I ran the, the uh, oak through, it was thicker, and I wanted to make sure that I was getting it in the right spot here. So I'm, uh, I, I had to readjust the height, and that's why I'm turning this handle, and this readjusts the height. So I had to actually back that off a little bit and make it a little higher to get these oak pieces through now I can start trying to get some uniformity in all of these things. So I'm just going to keep running them. I'm going to try the sycamore, see if this is in a good spot to start that. I know it is in a good spot for the oak, so we'll go through with those. Sometimes I try to run two through at a time, uh, depending on the cut. So we'll try that, all right?
just because I like to change things up a little bit, I'm going to just readjust this one camera and just give it a different angle so you can see from over another direction. I'll just take another view of what I'm doing over here. That looks good. So I'll switch you over to camera three now. There we go. Another view. Um, I'm also going to just take a second and raise this feed table up just a tiny bit. Um, it's just a hair low and I need it to be just a little bit higher because I want it to kind of lift up as the boards hit it. I want it to lift them just a little bit because that does help reduce the snipe off of here. Um, so I'm getting clean cuts all the way across the, the, uh, this board right now. So this one's getting clean cuts all the way across the surface. And the thing about the planer, this is why I joint first. So now this side is completely parallel to this side because this is my reference. It's running on that table on the bottom, the blade cuts off. So this is now parallel to this side. And that's why we do what we do in terms of jointing. Um, this one I think is now, there's just a tiny bit right here that is still a little bit from the rough side. Um, this has got some cool, cool stuff going on in, in the wood itself. So this will look really cool when it's done. Um, and uh, you can see on this, I'm not quite down to, to uh, planed wood over here. I still have some spots like here and over here. And I'll slowly get to those. This one as well still has some areas on it, like right here. You can see the light colored wood and then the darker wood right here and a little bit right here. So as I keep lowering the blade towards the table, I keep uh, just taking a little bit more of that material off. The other thing I can check now is my thickness. Um, right now I'm at uh, 1.08 inches which should be about the same for you know, 1.09. Um, the thing about this wood is this is, this is much softer than the, than the, uh, uh, the oak. So if I was just doing the sycamore, I would probably take larger pieces out of it. But because this is also running with red oak, and then soon to be walnut, I have to be careful that I don't um, that I I don't uh, take too much wood at one time because it will it will overburden my planer. This is not the world's beefiest planer. I think it has like a one or one point five horse motor. I'm not sure even what the horsepower rating is on this thing. But anyway, it's it's light cuts are what is called for when you're using this thing. So. All right, I'm gonna get back to it. I'm almost at the point where I can mix in the, uh, the walnut. And uh, when I do that, um, yeah, it's gonna make the process go a little slower, but um, let me see. So I went the angle this way. So feed it through. So this one. And I'm just trying to see which is my angle for feeding it through here. And that way. Um, that's the other thing too, just like the jointer, you wanna make sure um, that you're feeding your wood in with the grain direction going in a pre, in a certain way because if you don't you can get chip out. Um, think of like rubbing a cat's fur the wrong direction. That's what the, that's what the planer blade does when it hits those those uh, 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 grain and it, it it'll chip that grain and pull it up. And you really want to avoid that. Some wood can be really chippy like this stuff. You have to really be careful with it. Um, the red oak can be really chippy, the quarter sawn stuff. So you just want to make sure you've got the grain facing the right direction. And I believe we have it that way. So good to go. Um, I might need to run a fan in here in a minute. It's getting pretty, pretty tough. In fact, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hook up a fan here. Give me just a second. I have a little table fan. I just need to find a, uh, an extension cord to run it on. Um, because it's getting warm in here. And I mean, I knew it was going to be warm. It's supposed to be like 95 today. Um, so while hopefully the heat dome bubble is going away for folks in the West Coast, because God knows they've suffered, um, it's, I think it's shifting this direction towards the East Coast. And we've been hot, but we haven't been like ludicrous hot. 
like they have been on the West Coast. I mean, you know, multiple hundred days in Seattle and uh, uh, Portland, they're just not built for that. Um, I mean, I'm not saying I am either, but you know what? Most of the homes here have air conditioning. I was reading something that like only like 45% of the homes in Seattle have air conditioning, which they don't need it, right? Supposedly, but they do now. All right, I've got some air conditioning running, which I call a fan, but it's blowing right at me, which is a good thing. It keeps it cool and then we can march on. So I'm gonna take another cut or two on here and then I'll probably start mixing in the, uh, the walnut as well. So then we'll have pretty much all the wood being batched through. I know this is like the most exciting must-see TV for everybody involved. So I'm sorry, but it is what it is. This is real woodworking, not like the 15 minutes you see of compiled stuff. This is, this is it. So, you know, grab a cold one, kick back, enjoy the air conditioning and watch the show.
Just to show you, that was, uh, let me tell you, it kicks off. Uh, I just wanted to show you, that was a good, good pickup on my part as to when to start feeding these through. You can see um, that we did shave off a bit of wood off of these, but there's still a lot of um, um, untouched wood. So we were just catching the high spots on these boards, on these uh, walnut boards. And that was my whole intention was to try to get these things um, into the mix while we still had a good height. I didn't want to get too low to the point where we were taking off more than we can bite at a good time. So good, good, good job on my part. Well done. Pat on the back. All right, we're going to continue now because now we've got them all going through the planer. Um, we're still well away from our, our target. Um, we have to take off about another quarter of an inch is what we're looking at. I'm only taking off maybe a 64th to a 32nd uh, of an inch at a time on these boards. So uh, just for reference, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a reading on this oak one right here in the middle. So this says 1.0505, all right? Um, so let's see, one, pencil up here, 1. what did I say, 50, 1.05, well, it says 1.05, it's, it's I'm talking thousands here, so it's not really, right at the, air, I have to do it right at the mark there, 1.0535, okay, so 1.0535, and we'll come back and measure this after I take another chunk off, we'll come back and measure it and see exactly how much material is coming off. I turn the handle about that much. <laughs> um, that's lowering the head, but um, not a lot, so let's go ahead and see how much that loses us. So basically, I'm taking off about a hundredth of an inch. Yeah, um, not a lot of wood coming off of there. Uh, I, I might go down a little bit more, but I don't want to do too much at a time. The other thing I need to do while I'm taking a pause real quick is I'm going to check my dust collection. Yeah, and it's full. So I need to empty this, which that's the thing about planing is it creates, oh my God, a lot, a lot of dust chips. Uh, so I need to empty this. Now we'll probably end up doing this a couple of times um, because it just creates havoc here. Um, 
probably need to turn this fan on also. Because there's going to be a lot of dust in the air. It's unplugged. Oh, this is unplugged. Never mind. Okay. All right. Emptied my dust bin. Um, the planer just makes a ton of chips. And if I don't keep this thing cleaned out, basically it's not going to do its job. And then it just gets all over the place. So that's all there was to that, though. Not a lot. It's pretty quick. Uh, what's the temp in the shop? 81 and a half degrees in the shop today. Lovely. It's balmy. It's like beach weather in here, right? Humid, hot. All right, let's take a chunk off of this thing. See what we get here.
So if you are watching and you're wondering what the hell just happened, as I was bringing the board back, this has a little paddle switch on the side here. So as I was bringing the board back, I hit that paddle switch and it shut it off. And I was like, oh my God, I blew a fuse or whatever. And I was looking around, I was like, oh no, wait, it's not a blown fuse. Um, yeah, this just, this is the reality with doing, um, you know, with, with doing your own wood, especially when you buy wood that is, you know, when you need thinner wood, and you buy rough cut lumber, you're gonna spend some time with a plane. I mean, there's just no way around it. Um, this is why some people just prefer to buy their wood already, you know, surfaced for them. And I appreciate that because, uh, you know, standing here just feeding boards in a continuous motion, one after another after another is, um, you know, it's a task and uh, it's necessary to get where we're at. So right now, just to give you an idea, these boards are at 0 0.96, 97, 0.97. Um, so I'm gonna say 0.97. I'm taking off uh, a hundredth of an inch each time when I make these adjustments. I can't remember if I just made an adjustment or not. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm making like a hundredth of an inch adjustment and I'm gonna go a little bit more. Uh, that doesn't seem like a lot when you get to get down you know, it, it, it's a lot of passes to get down to uh, three quarters of an inch. 
Um, and then a much more industrial machine would crunch through this a lot faster because you could take thicker cuts. I just don't have one of those. And so I just have to do it this way. And this is the way most people do it. Um, I, I, you know, I love watching uh, build videos from creators on YouTube, but you know, their wood's already like, you'll see some fast sped up motion of them feeding wood through a planer or whatever. This is the reality of what it is. It, it just takes a long time to do this. So I apologize if you're sitting here watching this. Um, on the other hand, maybe you're enjoying it. Maybe you've got some nice music playing over top of it and you know, you're just watching the zen of planing. Who knows? I hope so. Anyway, I've got to get back to it because it ain't going to plane itself. That is for darn sure. I am going to check my uh, dust collection here. All right, we're still good. Because um, I need to make sure that I'm not filling that bin. I'm getting it emptied before, before it does get full. My large, it's probably already spilled over to the large one, which isn't giving me mass efficiency, but that's all right. Take a big chunk out of this. Let's move this along here, shall we? Um, the interesting thing is I've got some, uh, some interesting like features in the wood here. Like here's a wormhole right here that I'm planing down to. There's a little bit of a knot right here in this board that I'm planing down to. The thing is they're not very deep. And by the time I get this down to three quarters of an inch, I'll have planed past those and uh, revealed fresh wood underneath them. So, you know, it's, it's cleaning up, not only is it cleaning up the rough cut, but it's cleaning up some of these uh, things. We'll just call them things in the wood. Thank you. 
Just checking the waste bin. I'm getting close. It's about 80% full. So maybe another run or two and then I'll have to empty it again.
Almost at the point where I'm going to be mixing in, I just did one little pass with the cherry just to see. Um, I'm almost at the point where that's going to get mixed into the rotation, which is good. I mean, it means we're getting really a lot closer. I am full, so I'm going to empty this again. Oh my gosh, so much, so much stuff in here. The funny thing is, there's like little static, it's like little jumping bean type dust particles in here. They jump out of the bucket because there's a lot of static electricity running through the, the hose and stuff. Anyway, dump this stuff out here in my garbage can. And, oh, so much static. Try not to breathe it in. I hold my breath when I do that, so I don't breathe that stuff in. All right. Let's see if we can get through without having to empty again. That would be awesome. I don't know that that'll happen, but we're going to give it a try here. All right, squeeze back through tight spaces. What time is it here? 1230. Doing well. I mean, when you consider all I've done is plain wood today, but, you know, is what it is. The plain, the plain.
Okay, so just to kind of give you an update, we're getting close. Uh, we are at 0 0.80 inches, so we need to basically take off uh, about 500th of an inch, and then we'll have these down to their correct size. Um, yeah, the thing is, I'm feeding these through, like I'm not feeding, you saw, hopefully, if you've been watching, I don't know, uh, I was starting to... Um, like feed in the oak as I was feeding these in. But the thing is, the oak is such a harder wood that it might actually make the blade sh tilt or shift or make the rollers not move. So uh, because this is softer wood on this sycamore, I'm running these through on their own. And I'm doing the same thing with the cherry. And then I'm kind of just freight training the, the hardwoods through. So one right after the other. Um, but the softwoods I'm running separately just to keep them from getting skewed but anyway we're really close let me check on the oak too just make sure i'm getting the same see the oak's a little see the oak does doesn't cut as thick i might have to make an extra pass on that oak um because even though i'm running them through here they're, they're never quite 100 percent uniform like this says eight eight two at this end of this uh let me zero this out hang on zero so this says i'm at uh 0.81 and this has me at 0.81 um, so yeah I, I mean it's not the same thickness I think the I think it cuts a little bit more on that softer wood I think it just cuts a little deeper on there um, so I might have to pull the sycamore off it might finish a run prior to these other ones um, so that's why I keep measuring and I measure the different boards not just one because the 
depending on the thickness of the, uh, or not the thickness, but the hardness of the board I'm running through depends on the cut depth that I'm getting. So even though they're all running through at the same depth setting, they're getting a little bit more of a cut on the sycamore than I am on the hardwoods. Um, and that could just be that my blades are needing to be replaced and a few things, which they probably are. But um, anyway, I just keep an eye on it. If I need to stop, you know, a little earlier with the sycamore and keep going with the others, that's what I'll do.
Okay, we need to take a look and see where we're at. I was really close with that pass before. And, oh, dang. Well, see, this is crazy. It's like, oh, now I'm, now I'm a little, I'm a little thin here, actually. I, I'll, I can live with a little thin, but see, this is what's so weird. It's like the wood, even though it's going through the same process, different thicknesses. Okay, these are done. Sycamore's done. Let's try the uh, cherry is done. So cherry's done. Uh, white oak is done. It's not super uniform, but it's pretty close. So I think we're done here, gang. Believe it or not, it is 754. 744, 746. So, you know, if I'm like, you know, four hundredths of an inch off, I'm okay with that. So, yeah. Wow. All right. <laughs> it's hard to believe I'm actually finished because um, that took a long time. Uh, anywho, let's, uh, let me switch over and uh, oh, try not to sweat so much here. It is, whoo, 84 degrees in my shop, which, you know, grand scheme of things, not the worst temperature in the world, but I'm going to put my fan over here just so it's not right in my face. But um, yeah, it's, it's warm in here, and I'm glad I had this little fan kicking some air over there. Um, so we've got wood now that is finished on, it's really... Okay, this is surfaced on three sides technically um, because I jointed the bottom and one edge and then we've done the planer. So now what I'm going to do is, uh, not today, 
to Friday, what we'll do Friday is I will take these down to their, their final width, um, which it'll be, depending on which piece of wood it is, will be close to three inches. Um, if it's a hair under, maybe, you know, 16th under or whatever, that's fine. These obviously will be much thinner than three inches, but that's okay too. That's the way those are going to be. Um, but that gives me, that'll square that one side up now with the uh, jointed edge. So those will be parallel and these will be parallel and they're all square to each other. And that gives me lumber that I can actually start working with and making something out of. And that's kind of the whole point here. So, um, yeah, it, rough cut lumber is not for everybody. I'm, I'm just going to say it. it is not for everybody. It is not a, um, uh, everybody doesn't have the tools to do it. Um, not everybody has the desire to do it either. Um, I enjoy it. I, I, I kind of, I like the, the process of just, you know, feeding and, and taking a little bit at a time. And it's very, I don't know, Zen-like to be doing that to me. Um, I, I just enjoy the process, but not everybody does. And I get that. So like I said, there are resources where you can buy S4S wood surfaced on four sides. Um, Woodcraft stores have it. If you have a Woodcraft near you, I know I've got two or three of them within driving distance of me here. One of them's about 30 minutes away. There's 145 and one about an hour. So if I wanted to, I could hit one of those. Th there's a lot of Woodcraft stores out there. I'm not plugging Woodcraft per se, just because, you know, I do like the store, but um, they do have a large presence. Rockler has quite a few stores spread throughout the country. Um, there are other hardwood places spread throughout the country um, there's a place, no, I can't remember the name. There's a place in Ohio, um, that does a lot of stuff where they will finish the boards for you. Um, anyway, Pennsylvania, I'm sure has a ton of places. And I know there's Arizona, which is where woodworker source is. Why Arizona? I don't know, but that's where they are. So they have three or four stores. So just go look up hardwood, um, suppliers or hardwood resellers. Oh, here's another place. I just thought of this eBay. Believe it or not, you can buy surfaced wood on eBay and you can buy exotic wood on eBay. Um, it's a little pricey and you got to pay some heftier shipping costs. But if you're going to have wood shipped, you might actually get a good deal on some stuff. So check out eBay, check Craigslist. Believe it or not, people buy wood and then don't use it. <laughs> they sell it on Craigslist. So if you don't want to go through this process or you can't go through this process because you don't have the tools, but you want to build stuff with nice lumber and not just, you know, uh, stuff you get from the, the big box stores, um, check out different resources around. You can find them. They're there. Uh, you might pay a little bit more for some of your stock. You're definitely going to pay more for surfaced wood than you would for rough cut. I go to a rough cut distributor. That's all they sell is rough cut lumber. And I think they might have the facilities to actually do milling, but I don't even, I have never inquired because I don't, I do my own milling. Um, but they have a ton of stuff. And so a lot of people will travel from far and wide to go there and get their wood because the prices are really good. And that's one of the benefits that I like. I like the fact that if I go there, I can get the width of the board I want, the length of the board I want, the thickness of the board I want. And I don't have to compromise by taking somebody else's choices. I can make my own choices in, in my board dimensions. And so to me, that gives me a lot of flexibility. Um, when I go and restock, I'll just buy a whole bunch of like cherry and I'll buy 10, 10 inch wide boards of cherry because I know I can get three inch wide strips. I can get multiple three inch wide strips out of that 10 inch board. If I bought that at maybe a, uh, woodcraft, I don't know if they would have 10 inch wide boards. They might only have six inch, which wouldn't work for me because I can only get one three inch wide board out of that because of the saw curve. And then I'd have to throw away a whole bunch of wood. So that's what I love about going there. And I enjoy the process. Um, it's, it's just a, uh, like I said, it's kind of, I won't call it therapeutic, but it's pretty, for me, it's some, just one of those things that you get in the groove and you just start feeding the boards and checking them and feeding them. And I don't know. Um, anyway, 
uh, the more interesting part of these builds is coming up on Friday. Uh, I will start, like I said, I'm going to get these down to their S4S. I'm just going to run through the, uh, the saw. That takes no time at all. And then I'm going to go over and we're going to be doing a lot of work over on the crosscut saw behind me. It's uh, over there. That's the crosscut saw. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of work on there because we're going to be cutting our boards to length. Uh, and that's the first step in, you know, really getting these to start coming together. Um, we're going to cut them to length so that we have all of the working materials that we need. I'll make sets of working materials for each box or base, whatever you want to call it. And then uh, the next step after that, probably next week, we'll start doing the joinery on them, which the joinery on these is not very complicated. But um, yeah, that's where we'll go. So uh, what's today? Wednesday. Um, hopefully the weather will cool down a little bit by Friday. Um, and uh, hopefully it'll cool down where you are if you're in some place that's really warm. And uh, what time is it? It's it's one o'clock. I think I'm going to call it for today because I'm really at a stopping point where there's not much more for me to do. I'm going to go move these bases over here inside, the ones that you already saw that are already finished. Um, these turned out really, really nice. Um, yeah, I love this. Uh, Sapili with a tongue oil finish on it is just a really, really nice thing. Um, it's not super smooth yet, but when I put the lacquer on here, um, this thing will feel like a baby's butt. Not that I advise you go around feeling baby's butts, but if you're a parent, you know what I mean. Um, it'll be super smooth once I get the uh, lacquer on here. By the way, uh, I scored, just a, a little side note, I went to um, Walmart the other day and I always walk through the paint section when I go to Walmart, just in case I get lucky. And I actually found four cans they had five. I left one. You know, somebody might want it. But anyway, four cans of the uh, the Watco Semi Gloss Lacquer. This is the stuff, man. I'm telling you, if you like a kind of a natural wood finish that looks um, kind of like a hand rub waxed finish on there, it's not it's not super shiny. It's not matte. It's like a nice semi gloss in between. That is the stuff, man. It is really nice. Lacquer is beautiful to use because it lays down really smooth. It melts into the layer that's already there because it has solvents in it. So you just keep doing additive layers. You don't have to sand in between each one. I usually, I usually do like four or five coats. I get 400 grit and just lightly sand the top to remove any dust nits. Do one more coat and it is like super smooth. Feels fantastic. Feels like real wood. Lacquer is the stuff, man. That's all I'm going to say. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, I got, I've got a lot of vacuuming to do. Probably need to empty the dustbin one more time. Um, and then I've got some other stuff to do today. I'm not going to do any shop work tomorrow probably because, well, I have another project I might get to. But otherwise, I'm not going to do anything in here until Friday. We'll come back and we will uh, we'll start knocking these things down into smaller boards and start making them look a little bit more like a wood project and not just a stick of flat wood. So how about that? So thank you for coming if you came in. Um, if you would do me a favor, if you did stop in, you're watching, whatever, if you could hit the like button, you can hit the dislike if you want, I understand. But if you would hit the like button, that helps me out a little bit. And follow, subscribe, whatever's appropriate. Don't do anything that costs you money though, cause you know, I'm not here for the money, I'm here to, share the experience. So anyway, I hope you have a great day. Stay cool. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And I will see you all on Friday.